Hello and welcome to my garage. Today we're going to be bleeding a clutch system from the MGB. Now first of all, why would you need to bleed the system on these cars? Generally a hydraulic problem would be a sort of difficulty engaging gears with the engine running. The other issue with the clutch on these cars is if it's slipping, that's generally wear on the clutch rather than the hydraulic system itself. So to describe the system very briefly, you have a master cylinder which is pumping, uh, pumping hydraulic fluid into the slave cylinder. This is then moving moving this push rod which is moving the clutch, clutch fork that's inside the gearbox. Um, there's a couple of bits to check before we, uh, before we start working. Um, often these, uh, these push rods and the clevis pins can wear. You want to make sure you get a nice tight fit in there. Often that can be a problem, you're not getting enough movement on these parts. Another thing to check is the slave cylinder itself. This, uh, this rubber part here isn't really a seal, it's just a cover and if you lift if you lift this, um, lift this off the car and you've got, you've got brake fluid inside this area here, that means that slave cylinder is leaking and really it needs to be rebuilt or replaced. The, uh, the rebuild procedure on these slave cylinders is fairly straightforward. You basically have a spring, a spring that goes in the back and this is the, this is the seal which would usually wear. That goes in, that goes in next to, to form a tight fit and then the, uh, the, the metal plunger goes on top with, the sort of, with that concave side facing in because that's what your that's what your push rod goes into. It is worth checking on your slave cylinder. I hope you'll be able to see in here that you haven't got too much scoring inside this one. This one did have some scores in it, so I ended up just replacing it in the end. But I guess you could sort of work in there with, with a bit of sandpaper. But certainly, if you can feel if you can feel sort of indents or ridges, you do need to get them smoothed off before you rebuild. But just to show you the difference between this is the uh, this is the genuine uh, AP. Um, Slave cylinder, and then this is an aftermarket one. You will see on the uh, on the original AP when you get a little a little notch, sorry, a little button on here, and that means that sits perfectly flat against the gearbox. On the um, on the remanufactured slave cylinders, you don't get that uh, you don't get that little that little bump, so it can allow that to move a bit. I mean, the only trouble is these are, I think these are about sort of thirteen pounds each, and then the the genuine ones are around about forty pounds. So it just depends sort of how bothered you are. The other thing to uh, to sort of check with these is when these uh, when these slave cylinders ship, they often have the um, the bleed nipple in this end and the uh, the sort of cover here. And now that is the wrong way around because the uh, the uh, clutch pipe actually comes into this end of the slave cylinder, and then the uh, the bleed nipple should be should be on here so that it's on top once it's uh, once the uh, once the slave cylinder is inside the car. So that's just something to check before you, uh, before you go ahead and fit these to the car. So just briefly running through the parts we'll need for the, uh, for the bleeding procedure. We've got the Gunson's Easy Bleed, which I used in a, in a previous brake video. I'm gonna put a link just in the video here that shows, shows how that system works rather than going through it all again. I've also got the little jam jar I use for, uh, for bleeding the fluid into. I've just changed this with a, uh, with a, clear, a clear pop clear pipe rather than the black pipe I was using previously. I've got a syringe here, I'm basically just going to use that to suck the, um, the fluid out of the, out of the master cylinder before, before we get started. And in terms of fluid, just a normal uh, dot 4 is absolutely fine, I don't think there's any, any need for you know, any, any expensive fluid in, in a clutch system in these cars. Just showing you on the car now, this is where the, uh, the master cylinder is located. You can see the clutch fluid in there is a bit on the dark side, I mean I think it's only it's only 12 months old, but it doesn't seem to have lasted particularly well. So I'm going to suck all this out in a minute with the syringe and discard it. You can see you've got the thicker sort of copper pipe that runs down here. That runs all the way down to the, uh, to the braided hose on this car at the bottom. If you've got the braided or the rubber hose on your car, it is always worth checking them. They can sort of degrade after a while. They are right in the way of all the engine oil down in that, uh, in that section too. So to begin with, I'm going to start just, uh, just taking some of, this, uh, some of the old fluid out of the... Uh, out of the master cylinder, and you can see. I'm just going to take this, pick this up so you can see. Hopefully, you'll be able to see how dirty and black that uh, that fluid has become. So it's definitely uh, definitely time for a change. And always be very very careful working around the bodywork um, with uh, with brake fluid. It's very corrosive, and you want to make sure you get it off straight away if any gets uh, any gets onto the car. So I'm just going to put. I'm just sort of squeezing this into our into our jam jar. I'm going to put the jam jar just on the side, out of shot. And then just take a little bit more fluid, fluid out of here. Just being very careful not to drip, drip any about. We don't want to take all of the fluid out. It's worth just leaving a bit in the bottom. But it will just make the bleeding procedure that little bit cleaner if we can take out, take out some of the dirty stuff first. And because that fluid was so dirty, I'm even going to put a little bit of clean in 
just to sort of flush just to flush this reservoir through once obviously we'll be putting fresh fluid in once we uh, when, when we do the work but just to just to sort of take out a little bit more of this dirty fluid before we uh, before we get started there we are so that's our I'll put some fresh fluid black back in now and we can get this get this connected up connected up to the easy bleed system so we've got our we've got our easy bleed system in place and it's it's always important to connect this up without any fluid in the uh, in the bottle here just to check for any leaks in the system so we've got a just out of, out of shot here I've got a spare tire today we've got about 15 psi in it I think the maximum recommended is 20 but you you generally don't need to go quite that high so let's just connect this up and we'll have a listen for any leaks That does seem okay, I had a very slight air leak on the bottle there, but I think that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to connect. Um, I'm going to disconnect the uh, the air now and put some uh, put some brake fluid into the bottle there. The fluid I'll be using is this uh, is this Comma Dot Four. This comes from Opie Oils. And I'll just fill the. Uh, we'll just fill this bottle up. There's no harm in filling this sort of most away to the top. Obviously, any fluid you don't use, you can always uh, you can always tip back in again. And obviously, you want to make absolutely certain that the uh, the master cylinder doesn't run dry. So back over at the car, we've got our we've got our full bottle. We'll connect this up. Just give that a good pinch. You've got a rubber seal in here, so you don't need to squeeze it too much, but just make sure that's uh, nice and tight. We haven't disturbed the cap there, so we should be absolutely fine to uh, to connect the air back up. Let's just see what happens. Oh, still... yeah, it's leaking a little bit around there, but I think that's I think that's fine. That seems to that seems to be connected okay. So I'm going to go under the car now, and we'll start the uh, we'll start the, the the bleed procedure. So we're under the car now, and that's the uh, that's the clutch slave cylinder in front of us. It does look uh, nice and dry under here, which is always always a good sign. I'm just going to see if I can just I've got a little, a little clip around this uh, around this um, slave cylinder. So I'm just going to see if I can. I just want to lift this out to have a very quick look. There we go. And we're just going to have a little look. Oh, so it is a bit wet in there, unfortunately. Let's have a look a bit more. Give this a bit of a, a bit of a clean out. I mean, I'm not seeing. I don't know if that's just sort of oil that's that's got into it, or if it's uh, if it's anything worse. So what I'm going to do, just quickly, I think, is to jump back into the car, and I'm just going to cycle the, uh, just going to cycle a clutch pedal a few times, just to see, see if we're getting any more fluid, fluid coming out down into there. clutch a few times so let me have a look again just to see if we've got I don't think I don't think any more fluids come out so I think I think for today I'm happy just to bleed this system and then we'll we'll see how it looks I'm guessing the sort of the black dirt in the end there might uh, might have been from the engine or or sort of fall in there over time and I'm just going to turn this around till I get the so we'll try and get this uh this metal slip back on. Unfortunately, it's a little bit difficult when I'm. It's easier to do on a bench than it is under the car. Um, still not quite, quite in place. Let me just see if I can lever this over. I think that's uh, yeah, I think that's got it back on back on safely now. So let's uh, let's carry on with the uh, with the bleed. So we've got our we're going to hook our little a little pot up in place. That's just got this wire hook that sits sits nicely over there. We'll take the uh, the cover off the bleed nipple, and then we can connect we can connect our hose on. 
Now that's going to give us a little bit of a turn, and we'll see what uh, we'll see what sort of comes out of it. So as you can see, that fluid is is fairly dirty. I'm going to let it let it just run for a bit, and hopefully it might uh, it might turn clear. I'd be a little bit cautious not to uh, obviously let too much fluid uh, too much fluid in and uh, and run out in the in the reservoir. So I'll give that another turn, and I think I will. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I'm just going to check up above that we haven't uh, gone low on the fluid. So we're we are still fine. We're still fine for the fluid up above. So let me just uh, open it up again. And let that bleed through. And the other thing here, a little tip: you, you can just burp the system by pushing pushing that plunger back in, letting it come all the way out, and just extracting any last any last bit of bit of air that's in the uh, in the reservoir. And that's it. So we'll close that close that back up now. Oops! Pinch this bleed nibble back up. This is going to be a little bit hard to see, but I'm hoping just to show you how that rear rear sort of foot of the slave cylinder it does sit tight against the gearbox there, and that's one of the uh, one of the important things about the uh, the genuine slave cylinders rather than the aftermarket ones is they do have that little foot that makes sure this all stays nice and firm, and so when the um, when the push rod at this end is, is being pushed out, that's the base of the slave cylinder here has a firm. Uh, has something firm against it. So I'm just going to go inside the car now and operate the clutch lever. And what I'm looking for there is about a centimetre and a half or five eighths of an inch of travel and it seems as though we have that. And we'll, uh, we'll just give this uh, the bleed nipple one final just tweak. We don't need to do this too tight, just make sure they're, they're pinched up. They are quite easy to break if you are if you're too hard on them. And then we'll put our cover back on. We'll move our our jam jar out of the way, and we can go up back into the engine bay again. So back up to the top of the car. We'll disconnect the airline first. That's feeding the easy bleed system, and then we'll very carefully and then we'll very carefully take this uh, take this uh, cap off. You just got to be careful not to spill any fluid onto the onto the bodywork. So that looks fine, then we can lift the whole, uh, the whole assembly out of the way. I'm just going to carefully just wipe around that, wipe around the top of the mast cylinder there. Just to show you very quickly, hopefully you can see, the fluid does look a bit dark in the, let me just go a bit, a bit more light on it, but I think it, it does look nice and, uh, nice and clean. There we go. So nice, clean, fresh fluid, and a good thing with the Easy Bleed system as well is it doesn't it keeps the sort of fluid at the, at the right level. So you can just see on the side of the uh, of the pot there. That's just where I'd like it, just under the maximum. So cap up on the mast cylinder. Okay. And what I will do, I'm just going to give this uh, this wing a very quick wipe down. This is just a, a sort of detailing spray, just to make absolutely certain that, uh, that there's no. Uh, no brake fluid on that on that wing there, and then with, with that all done, that's the job finished. Um, hopefully, your procedure will be as straightforward as mine was. The, the Easy Bead does make it nice and simple. As always, don't hesitate to get in touch with any questions, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Many thanks. Bye.